Shalom. All praises, blessings, glories, and honors to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Recha, Kodash. Double honors to my elder apostles and bishop elders of Great Millstone who have taught me this truth as well of men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad, which means peace and mercy to the elect of the nation of Israel. Mome you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Israelite foreigners of the seed and of all forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great, and abroad. To you I say Shalom and Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Rataza. This lesson is edifying and informative. Ezekiel chapter thirty five verse one Moreover the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord Yahweh, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Saith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. From pages that basard at edu phrenology and scientific racism in the 19th century the 19th century began from 1801 c to the 1900 c what is phrenology phrenology is a pseudoscience, the word pseudoscience means false knowledge. Pseudo means false or to tell a lie. And the word science means to know or knowledge. And so pseudoscience means false knowledge that involves the measurement of bumps on the skull to predict mental traits. It is based on the concept that the brain is the organ of the mind and that certain brain areas have localized specific functions or models. It was said that the brain was composed of different muscles, so those that were used more often were bigger, resulting in the different skull shapes. This led to the reasoning behind why everyone had bumps and the skull in different locations. In other definition, pseudoscience, rather, excuse me, phrenology, excuse me, is the detailed study of the shape and size of the cranium. In other words, the skull as a supposed indication of character and mental abilities. What is scientific racism? Scientific racism is a pseudo-scientific belief that empirical evidence exists to support or justify racism, racial inferiority, or racial superiority. Recall that the Edomites look at the Israelites, especially 
the so-called African Americans, which are from the tribe of Judah, as being three-fifths of a man. They look at the tribe of Judah as being inferior to themselves and themselves being superior above the tribe of Judah and the rest of the tribes of the nation of Israel. Scientific racism, sometimes termed biological racism, is the pseudo-scientific belief that empirical evidence exists to support or justify racism, racial inferiority or racial superiority. Before the mid-20th century, scientific racism received credence throughout the scientific community, but it is no longer considered scientific. The truth is, us so-called Negro Latinos and Native American Indians and his life foreigners of the seed line of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, are racially superior in contrast to Esau, Edom, and the heathen nations who are racially inferior. We are the salt of the earth. And it is written in the book of Psalms that the Israelite man, beginning with the elect, are gods. As it is written, I have said, ye are gods. But as I speak, we are currently, yet this day, in captivity, subject to our enemies, with the worst of them being the Edomites, the so-called Caucasian race, the wicked, according to Malachi chapter 1 verse 4, for our disobedience to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. The theory now largely discredited that different racial and ethnic groups of innately differing levels of physical, intellectual, and moral development that distinguish them as superior or inferior. And the so-called white man believes that he is more physically, intellectually, and morally developed than the Israelites, especially the so-called Negroes, the tribe of Judah. Now this was posted on March the 5th, 2017 by Key or K. Tito Whiskey, if I pronounce his name correctly. The pseudoscience of phrenology study of skull shapes as an indicator of mental abilities was founded by German psychologist Franz Joseph Gall in the early 1800s. Gall claimed that the brain has multiple organs and each correspond to different mental traits or abilities. Because the human skull is shaped as it is because of the brain, he claimed that the study of the shape size in geography or geography of the human skull could yield information about these organs and the consequent mental capacity of the person to whom it belonged. This field of study was based on a faulty science or pseudoscience in which evidence that helps prove a researcher's hypothesis is taken into consideration. When this pseudoscience spread to the U.S. around the 1830s, it was used to provide or prove prevalent yet baseless hypothesis about the inferiority of non-white races. The U.S. in the 1830s and 1840s when phrenology became popular, was struggling 
to justify the continuation of slavery in the face of a growing abolitionist movement and was dealing with interactions between white western settlers and existing Native American populations. And this is where things get really interesting, brothers and few sisters. In the case of slavery, physicians such as Charles Caldwell used phrenology to attempt to prove that African people, so-called African people, because the continent of Africa was named after a Roman Edomite general, Leo Scipio Africanus, as America was named after Amerigo Vespucci, because at one point, the southern kingdom of the nation of Israel, which comprised Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, were dwelling in that land after they had fled from the siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD from the Romans down into the western parts of the continent of so-called Africa that was again named after the Roman general Leo Scipio or Scipio Africanus now originally that continent was named the continent of Ham or Ham in the Hebrew, which means hot. This is where you get the word chemistry from, which means heat or hot. Why? Because Hamites dwelt in different parts of that continent. And in the land of Sudan, the so-called Egyptians, those tall, dark Hamites that had us in slavery, they dwell in the land of Sudan. Okay? Just a little piece of geography. Nonetheless, it is, it is important to understand the history that had happened in that part of the world concerning our people after they had fled there from the Romans during the siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD Judah, Benjamin and Levi were dwelling in parts and particularly in the western part of the continent of Africa and then Later on in history came the transatlantic slave trade. Okay? So, reason. Charles Caldwell used phrenology to attempt to prove that so called African people, which in this particular case, it should be so called Negro people. Of the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, because Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were the ones that were taking from certain parts of the continent of Africa and brought into slavery over here into the continent of North America by the Edomites during the trans-Atlantic slave trade and other parts of the world as well but in this particular case we are focusing on here in America, Babylon the Great where in their rightful places or rightful place rather, excuse me have slaves now according to biblical prophecy Caldwell at that particular moment in time According to biblical prophecy, for our disobedience against Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai was right at that particular moment in time, even now, for we are yet this day in our captivity. However, Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai will soon liberate us of the elect 
which I pray that I am of the elect, as well as you brothers and few sisters, we are prisoners of hope. And therefore we are the hopeful elect. For we hope that we are of the elect whom will soon be liberated from this captivity, from this great prison, especially these bodies by the hands of our Lord, Yahweh, through his son Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior. Now reading on, Caldwell studied the skulls of many different peoples, including Africans, at the Muse de Phrenology in Paris. In 1837, he concluded that the skulls of African people, a flawed a generalization of an entire continent of diverse people, indicated a temableness not a word, temableness, means capable of being tamed, tameable, easily managed, controlled or taught or modeled, tameable, manipulated, or Mu uh, are manipulable, rather, excuse me, not a word tamed, means domesticated, the disciplined, broken, broken in, and it was not the so called Negroes broken in during slavery, trained. Used to humans, pet, house trained, house broken, and weren't so called Negroes house broken and house trained and broken in again during slavery? Yes, they were. You had house niggas, sambos, not sambo, um, coons. Because there's an actual history on who Sambo was. Actually, it wasn't Sambo. I'm sorry. It was, uh, damn, it escapes my mind. But I, let me, matter of fact, let me see something real quick. Okay, so it was actually Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom was actually a good guy. But it was but it was Sambo that was really the wicked one. Because you actually had two slaves by the name of uh, Uncle Tom and Sambo. Sambo was actually the coon. Okay? And you can do your research on that particular history. <laughs> so, again, the word... Tameableness means capable of being tamed. Tameable, manipul manipulable, easily managed. That made them suited to be slaves. Made who suited to be slaves? So-called Negroes, Latinos. And Native American Indians. In this particular case, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Especially Judah, the head tribe. And required them to have a master. I'm sorry, Massa. Don't be a bad boy now. Listen to Massa. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? This view of people of African descent as inherently mentally inferior, so they viewed us as being inherently mentally inferior. This is the pride of these Edomites. Contributed to the continuation of slavery and the segregation 
and racism that still persists in the U.S. And we continuously see that today being portrayed. So what else does these Edomites have to show you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians that he hates you and that he sees you as being inferior? as goyim, as cattle. In the case of Native Americans, the work of psychologists included, including, excuse me, Samuel Morantan helped justify their removal from their land in the 1830s and 40s. Morantan's 1839 book, Crania American detailed skull configurations and consequent mental capacities of the four separate species he defined, including whites and Native Americans. And this is how he saw you so-called Native American Indians, even to this day. He saw differences between races as natural and dictated by God, which is true. The Lord did separate the nations. But he chose out of them one nation of people unto himself, which is the nation of Israel. Rejecting the view that physical differences were created by environments. His study of skulls concluded that Native American minds were different than that of the white man. And it was cited in oracles targeted at the Western settlers encountering Native Americans. One article stated that Native Americans were adverse, and the so-called Native Americans are the Gadites, the tribe of Gad. It says, One article stated that Native Americans were adverse to cultivation, slow in acquiring knowledge. So they looked at you so-called Native American Indians as being slow in acquiring knowledge and adverse to cultivation. In other words, this man looked at you as being uh, mentally inferior to him, slow. This view of Native Americans exists in society as not conductive to industrialization. That's why they put you niggas on reservations. Oh, these niggas, they gonna slow us down, so we gotta put them on reservations. We gotta enslave them, rip their women, lie to them, and put them in reservation so that they will not slow down our progress to industrialization. Help justify Andrew Jackson's Indian removal policies. You see that? And allowed Western settlers to continue taking the land of Native Americans. And he's going to pay for that. The flawed use of signs to support exploration of groups of people helped perpetuate racial oppression and distorted future views of the biological basis of race. This includes the article. And there's a whole lot more. There's a whole lot more, man, that this man has done way before this concept or uh, pseudoscience of phonology had been introduced and scientific racism so now let's get the scriptures again and then conclude the lesson I'll right the side that was informative to you brothers and few sisters concerning the wickedness the heinousness of this goddamn Edomite this devil now, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, verse 1. Again, it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir. Seir is Esau, Edom. And prophesy against it. And say unto it, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. So the Lord is against you Edomites, for you are the wicked. According to Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. And I will stretch out mine hand against thee. And how is the Lord going to stretch out his hand? Through Yahweh Shai. On his right hand. 
and also through the use of the weapons of his indignation which are the nuclear missiles according to Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 25 and also through his people after the Enemites have been enslaved and I will make thee most desolate I will lay thy cities waste and how will the Lord lay the cities of the Edomites waste through nuclear destruction and thou shalt be desolate and thou shalt know that I am the Lord Yahweh because thou hast had a perpetual hatred an everlasting hatred Against who? Against the nation of Israel. Or Lord said, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So you have a perpetual hatred against us, but we hate you more. And I shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword, which was and is your blessing. And you did a lot of heinous things during slavery and post-slavery one of those heinous things that you had done was an act by the, no, by the name of Derby's Dose. You can check that up. In the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end, right, post-slavery. Therefore, as I live, save the Lord Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. So as you love shedding blood, likewise will blood return back upon you twice over and shall pursue thee and blood shall pursue thee. So if thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. And this will ultimately happen after these Edomites have served one thousand years years of whole-course slavery under the nation of Israel and the kingdom that will be established upon the earth after our Lord Yahweh Shai returns. After a thousand years has been accomplished, he, they will be rounded up together and exterminated according to the local prophecy written of in the book of Obadiah. And I will fill his mountains and, and before that happens concerning this side when our Lord Yahweh shall return, his kingdom will be desolated by the nuclear missiles. And I will fill his mountains, his governments, with his slain men, in thy hills, his smaller governments, and in thy valleys. And in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword, the nuclear missiles. I will make thee perpetual desolations. And that city shall not return, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, all praises, all blessings, all glories, and all honors, unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Merchak, Kodash. Abba Radha, this lesson has been edifying to the elect. Until the next, I say Shalom.